First off, let me answer the episode's question. The kids are definitely not okay. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is John Shigio Boyter Jr. and welcome back to my podcast, Darling, I'm Depressed Again, Don't Tell My Mother, where we discuss mental health in adolescents, teenagers, college students, high school students, primary school students, black people, white people, Bahamians, Americans, all types of people. Once you are breathing and once you are a human being, we have something for you. Now, each episode, we have a certain word that ties everything together, you know, a theme. And the theme for this episode is blind obedience. Now, I know what you may be thinking, John, JJ, how would blind obedience mess up your mental health? What does that have to do with mental health? Let me tell you. So, growing up in the Bahamas, they have this, um, we have, we are predominantly Christian nation, and we have this scripture that we are taught as children children obey your parents in the lord and that is a scripture that i am so grateful for because when you are obedient to someone in the lord because it's never just obey your parents in the lord it it becomes the context for everything you know it becomes children obey your teachers in the lord it becomes children obey your aunties and uncles in the lord it becomes children obey whoever and whoever in the lord Because once you're obeying someone in the Lord, their instruction will never mislead you, right? So that scripture, that's something I've always been grateful for because obeying someone who is being led by God and someone who is being taught by God saves you so much heartache and pain, right? So that obedience, that obedience is good. But I'm not talking about that in this episode. What I'm talking about is blind obedience. When people cut off the first part of that verse, children obey. It's just children obey. Children obey. And when you cut off a verse like that, when you just remove the other part of it, it creates a very, very dangerous environment. And let me tell you why I'm saying that. Our children, and not just in the Bahamas, but I do feel like this is everywhere. We were taught to be obedient, yes? Now for me, I was taught to be obedient in the Lord, right? And I was taught to follow the instructions of my parents and those who are older than me who were guided by the the voice of the Lord. That's perfect, wonderful. But then there are instances where you have children who are being told to be obedient just for the sake of being obedient what do i mean by that let me break that down you have children who we teach blind obedience to and the reason why that's so dangerous is because a lot of the negative habits and behaviors that we have in society are taught to children who are blindly obedient to them and are just willing to willing to carry them out because that's what they were always taught to do. And that that is what happens most of the time. We tell a lot of times we say, we say to children, children are to be seen and not heard. An adult is always right. You have no voice. You have no opinion. I don't want to hear you. A lot of times children are told that we are told that and because we were taught blind obedience because we were taught to be blindly obedient and i'm not talking about in the context of obeying godly instruction i'm talking about in the context of just obeying any instruction and for that reason the kids are not okay the children are not okay the children past and present and i hope to god not in the future are not okay because society has taken away the value of a child's voice society has taken it away because let me tell you something if you want an adult if you don't pay bills what you know about stress what you know about anxiety depress them dishes eh? depress that school uniform 
the press that food, the press, the, 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 go the press that stove. Depression, anxiety, you don't pay any bills. And so we are taught that our lives don't have any value until adulthood because no one will listen to our voices until we become adults. And kids are not okay, children are not okay because we, and I say we to include myself, but we never, children never have an opportunity. They rarely have an opportunity to say how they feel in a respectful manner without being shut down. And that is the reason why a lot of the things that we see happening in society, a lot of the, a lot of the assaults, a lot of the aggression, a lot of the anger, is built up, pent up frustration because when that child was so small and so little, you taught them to shut up and clam up instead of opening up their mouth and telling you how they feel. Because their feelings were so inconsequential to you. Their feelings were so unimportant to you. Our feelings were so inconsequential and un unimportant to you that you chose to neglect them rather than nurture them. So now you have angry adults out in the world who don't know how to process emotions. You have angry husbands in the world who don't know how to talk to their angry wives who don't know how to talk to their spouses. People who don't know how to deal with grief. People who don't know how to deal with sadness. How to deal with being upset. Because when they were little and they tried to go to their mommy or their daddy and they said, Mommy and daddy, I'm upset. Their parents would tell them, get out my face. I don't want to hear that. You have everything. What do you have to be upset about? And the kids are not okay. And let me tell you something. Adults. It, it's so disheartening to see that the same adults that went through the same things when they were younger becomes the adults that use these same methods on their children, the method of suppression. And let me tell you something. I have spoken before about being bullied on this podcast and being mistreated, but some of the worst treatment that I have ever experienced verbally was at the hand of adults. Some of the worst and some of the best treatment that I've ever experienced was at the hand of adults. The ones who are supposed to have the voice. The ones who are supposed to be the champion of the champions of society and lead and instruct in godly instruction are the ones that often mistreat children the most. And yes, children can be cruel, but oh my gosh. You have some 50-year-old children, you have some 30-year-old children, you have some 25-year-old, 35-year-old children walking around who are angry at the world and they use, the opp they use that opportunity to take it out on the younger ones. And that's the truth. I've met some very vicious adults that make me, it makes me go and Layla and I wonder what happened to you when you were a child? What happened to make you this way? Let me tell you something. A child's first bully will more than likely be an adult. Who has also gone through, gone through the same thing. Let me repeat that. A child's first bully will more than likely be an adult who has gone through the same thing. I know for me, back when I was in school, <laughs> let me tell you something. I said before how I had some of the most amazing people in my life when I was in school. I mean... My primary school teachers, my first grade teacher was and is still a blessing in my life. You know, my primary school teachers, I didn't have a language teacher that I didn't love. I loved my language teachers. Most of my science teachers, I loved, listen, wonderful people. But there were instances where you had and you encountered adults 
who were so vicious and unnecessarily cruel that it made me wonder what the hell happened to you? What happened to you? Because there is no way that you as an adult can be so emotionally and verbally abusive to children. And because society has taught, because this blind obedience has taught children that the adult is always right and the adult must always have the final say and you are never to respectfully speak up for yourself and you are never to say anything. You just sit there and take it, shut up, don't say a word. If you say a word, I can bust you in your mouth because society has taught children that you have so many children being held captive by the words of those who are older than them. I have literally, and I say this, and it wasn't just, you know, in school, but even as I became a teenager, I met, some of the worst people that I met were adults. Literally. It wasn't people in my, it wasn't mostly people in my age category. It was people 20, 30 years older than me. So you know what that tells me? The kids haven't been okay for a very long time. The kids have not been okay for a very long time. And when I talk about adults being verbally abusive, when I talk about adults being verbally rude, verbally condescending, I'm not talking about an adult disciplining a child or reprimanding a child. No, because the rod of correction, that's, that, that drives you know, all of the badness out of a child that those words that reprimanding that that that's what we need sometimes no i'm not talking about reprimanding a child i am talking about saying things that you know will break down a child's integrity that you know will break down a child's mind knowing that you will say something that will hurt a child and choosing to say it anyway i have seen adults Sit down and call the child stupid. I have seen adults sit down and tell a child that they're not going anywhere in life. But blind obedience has taught that child that adult is right. I don't have I don't have a reason to say anything against that adult because they're the adult. I'm the child. That adult is always right. And we wonder why. Our, ki our kids, our children, these generations, our generations are so messed up. I've seen it. I'm not speaking from a, a, a hypothetical situation. I have seen it. Grown adults telling children the most vile, the most disgusting things. I have seen it. And that is why I can say that blind obedience has truly caused a devastating turn of events for the past few generations and the generations to come. Because when you are blindly obedient to the voice of someone telling you that you are nothing, that you can't do it, that you are stupid, that you are incompetent, subconsciously you are going, going to follow that voice. Because you have been taught to be obedient to instruction, not godly instruction, but instruction nonetheless. So I am, if someone tells, if someone told me something like that, and I'm thinking in my head, okay, they said it, they're the, this, this is a thought process. They said it, they're the adult. Oh my gosh, it must be true. That's how dangerous blind obedience is. The kids are not okay. The kids are not, I even remember there are a few people that I can think of. There was this person that taught me. They were so condescending. They were so vicious. You would ask them a question. They would treat you like you're the most idiotic person in the world. I made the mistake of asking a question. Baby, who is your language teacher? As if I'm incompetent for asking a question. And that stopped me from asking questions. Because why would I ask? 
literally. And it wasn't just a specific thing. I realized that. And as I got older, I had to realize I got, I couldn't take it personally. This person literally just indulged in the fact. And I realized that they're an adult. These are children. I can bully them however I want and whatever way I want. And some of them aren't going to tell their parents. Because guess what? Their parents taught them the adult is always right. And because I am always right, I get the power to exert my authority over them. And do as I please. So yeah, I could call them slow. I could tell them they ain't make. I could tell them whatever I want to tell them. Because I'm the adult. They're children. They would never even dare to tell me anything. How uh, A child? Speak to me. Speak to me? Please. And you could tell that's the mindset. That was the mindset of this specific individual. And even to this day, Lord, huh. but that's the case. And I experienced it multiple times. I still experience it to this day. And I, I honestly have to pray to God that I do not become the adult who tells a child to obey, but I become the adult who tells a child to obey me in the Lord. That my instructions and my principles and my words are guided by his mercies and his love. I pray to become that adult because I don't want to be the adult that every time a child see, sees me, they have to turn in the other direction. Or they want to turn in the other direction. Or they'd wish that the earth would swallow them alive. I don't want to be that type of adult. Because I've met those adults. I've been taught by some of those adults. And I, and I saw it break people down and it broke me down over a period of time because when you deal with something so malignant and so cruel continuously, 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 that can break your spirit. Or it can try to at least. And you know, you may never intend, or an adult may never intend, or they may never intend to do harm. They may never intend to do harm by telling a child to be blindly obedient to what they're saying, to shut up. And you know, they may think they're doing good because that's what they were taught, right? So they may think that they're doing good. All in all, you're causing more harm to be passed on generation to generation. Generation to generation. And it bothers me when a child respectfully, note I say the word, respectfully, speaks up for themselves and they're branded rude. They're branded disrespectful because they dare to open up their mouth because they wouldn't allow someone to attempt to devalue and depurpose them. It bothers me. I wish that I had spoken up for myself at an earlier point of ta in time when dealing with those specific adults. I wish that I had done that. No, I sat there and I allowed blind obedience because that's what I was taught. I allowed blind obedience to remind me of my core values. Shut up, sit there, and take it. I wish that I had spoken up. I wish that I had said something earlier. But I realize that with children who usually speak up, who usually say something, who usually try to express themselves, no one listens. People or people rarely listen. The people who we want to listen, they rarely do. But if I can say something, I'll say this. Just because no one may be listening to you right now doesn't mean they never will. So if you have a voice and if you feel as if you are going through something or you're experiencing something that's honestly, honestly hurting you, speak up. Don't make the mistake that I did. Don't shut up and be quiet like I did. Speak up. Because eventually someone will hear you. 
God didn't give you a voice for no reason. He didn't give you a conscious mind and a spirit and a, and a soul for no reason. He gave you these things to use. He gave you discernment. He gave you a conscience. He gave you the ability to speak and to understand. He gave you the ability to, under, to be understood. He gave you a way to communicate. Even if you can't speak, you have a way to communicate. He gave you that. Use it. If God didn't want children to have voices, he wouldn't have given them a tongue. If he didn't want them to have opinions, he wouldn't have given them a mind. I encourage you to use your voice, to speak up, to not be afraid to stand up for yourself in the face of that adult that may call you slow or stupid, who may make you feel like you're nothing. Don't allow yourself to be washed away like that. And maybe when we do that, maybe when we encourage our children to start speaking up, to use their voices, to open their mouths, maybe then the kids will be okay. My name is John Schiopoiter Jr. And this is my podcast, Darling, I'm Depressed Again. Don't tell my mother. Until next time.